Good. Ready to go? Mm -hmm. all right, well, first of all, it's an absolute honor to be here, Mr. Sorkin. It's my pleasure. Uh, and me thank you so much, mm -hmm. and Aaron. Uh, but let's talk about this film. Obviously, you've been writing for so many years. Uh -huh. I know you've been getting this question, but what was it about specifically Molly's Game that made you say, I need to direct that? Because I've been watching your work from Rob Reiner, obviously. You know, obviously, Moneyball was incredible. Fincher's work. Talk about why this one. This one, because, uh, uh, you know, with this story, uh, uh, and, and just quickly, Molly's Game uh, is the true story uh, of a woman, Molly Bloom, who ran the world's most exclusive high-stakes poker yeah. game. Celebrities, CEOs, hedge fund, hedge fund managers, uh, 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 they, millions of dollars would change hands every minute. Uh, and, um, and Molly scaled this business and she became known as the poker princess but she was the farthest thing from a princess what she was was a straight A student at the University of Colorado who was on her way to Harvard Law School she was also a world class skier who came a hundred yards from making the US Olympic team when a freak accident that I don't want to say too much about because I'll spoil the beginning of the movie kept her off the Olympic team and she decided to take a year off before law school go to Los Angeles and be young in warm weather for a while <laughs> but ended up becoming uh, the biggest game runner in the world. Uh, in this story, even in what I just mentioned, there are a lot of shiny objects, and I knew that there'd be a gravitational pull to make the movie more about the decadence, the money, the sex, the glamour, the bold face names, and the poker, and I wanted those things to be the backdrop against which a more emotional more powerful story uh, uh, was being told. Now the way you write dialogue, I would call it very musical. Uh, it flows, there's there's a sense to it where you, I find myself like almost nodding during it because it's so well written and there's like this amazing flow to it. I was just curious if you can compare the idea of writing dialogue to maybe music in the sense of do you write it to music? Uh, well sure, first of all I, I think it's a great compliment. Um, uh, I was uh, my, my parents, starting from a very young age, took me to the theater, oftentimes to see plays that I was too young to understand, like Who's <laughs> Afraid of Virginia Woolf when I was nine years old. Yeah. So I didn't really understand what was going on on the stage, but I loved the sound of dialogue. I loved the sound of, uh, of these words crashing into each other, of speeches, of uh, uh, duets and trios and allegro and adagio and that kind of thing. So I wanted to imitate that sound, and it, it, it sounds like music to me. Yeah. And in fact, words, when they're spoken for the sake of performance, have all the properties of music. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the language is pretty precise, just like in music, where if it's in 4-4 four, four time, you have to have four beats in a measure, you can't have three, you can't have five. Huh. Uh, there'll be lines that just won't work as well if you accidentally add or subtract a syllable. And the actors wow. know that. They're, after a take, they'll go to the script supervisor and say, I know I, I did something wrong. Is it <laughs> the and not and? Uh, uh, that kind of thing. So what the language sounds like is as important to me as what it means. You know, one thing I love about uh, you directing this movie is the idea that you're now directing your own dialogue. And I mean, I've been watching, as I mentioned, Miller's work on Moneyball, and then you have Fincher and mm -hmm. Reiner. They've been putting your words to screen for a long time. I was curious, did you find anything about, uh, about your writing that you didn't know prior by directing it? Were there things you found that you liked and or disliked about certain elements of like, did you, was, it, was it a learning process about your writing? Because I mean, I love everything you do. I was curious, as somebody who's behind the camera of watching somebody read your dialogue, was yeah, it weird for you? The biggest thing I discovered is that there's no place to breathe. <laughs> um, uh, and you know, you mentioned David Fincher a couple of times, who uh, I had a great experience with uh, working on the Social Network. You know, I've, I've I love working with great directors, and I'm not done wanting to work with great directors. Uh, but I had uh, a fantastic experience on Molly's Game, primarily because of the people that I was working with. I'm very proud of what we did together. It's a triumph of collaboration. So directing is something I, I'd like to do again, but. Uh, uh, I called David Fincher uh, at oh. some point uh, uh, early in the shoot uh, and said, uh, listen, w when you were directing The Social Network, where did you tell the actors to breathe? And this is the sound he made on the other end of the phone. <laughs> He's like, now, now you're getting it, okay? Wow. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, I, you know, 
I, I did learn about my own writing. I did learn, you know, by the end of the shoot, I, I learned all the things I didn't know. And so uh, hmm. I'm looking forward to next time being just maybe an inch or two better than I was this well, time. Well, to us, you're perfect. Uh, I know we have to wrap up, so you have to get, we're getting ready to go on live TV. Before you go, one more quick question for you. Jessica Chastain has this ability just to command such a presence on camera. Um, and you film her in so many different ways in this film. Lots There are close-ups. Talk about, the, as a director, the, the, the importance of a close-up and obviously the idea of like how you frame a shot and how you want her to come across in scenes. And is a, I mean, framing is obviously a huge deal as a filmmaker. Yeah, it's a very big deal. And uh, I, I was very lucky to have, uh, we were very lucky to have Charlotta Christensen uh, as our cinematographer. She was not only very, uh, she's a fantastic shooter, also very patient with a first time director. And look, the, the camera, I don't have to tell you, it, it has a vocabulary yeah. all, all its own. Um, so uh, if if everybody is sitting around a, a, a table e eating dinner and they're having a great time telling stories and eating steak and drinking beer and I just have the camera uh, uh, slowly push in on Jessica while everybody's talking around her we're in her head yes. now we're not with the party we realize that she's thinking about something else so th things like that uh, you, you know I, I, I came up with in the theater with with plays where you can't manipulate what it is the audience is looking at they're looking at the stage and everything has to happen mm. uh, with language I'm my, my main you know color paint in, in in movies is still language but I like the vocabulary that you can establish with uh, uh, with camera movement with cuts with sizes things like that well it's an honor to meet you thank you so much for the my interview. pleasure thank you, you so much for talking to me that fincher story is awesome now that laugh's gonna be in my head as a nightmare from now on that <laughs> mine too <laughs> it's freaking me out i also want to know how you call david fincher i didn't even know he had a phone i feel like he's like always off the grid with himself but he's, uh, he's, he, <laughs> he's semi off the grid yeah i can well, find him. nice to meet you mr sorkin thank really you so nice much. meeting you thank you so much uh and